Okay, hello. We are on the set of Legend of the Seeker, and uh, if you'd like to come this way, I'll show you. Beasley and I've uh, directed the, the opening television event, 90 minutes of uh, Legend of the Seeker and basically being the first director out the block we, we basically discover the show. What is going to make this show different from other action adventure shows or other fantasy shows? What's different about it? What's good about it? Well like a wise man once told me, in this life you can't go back, only forward. Spoken like the true seeker. The show is based around two really terrific characters, Kaylin, Amnil, and Richard Cipher, who are thrown together and find that their attraction and trust turns into one of fantasy's greatest love affairs, an unconsummated love affair, I hasten to add. You know neither of you can ever act on these feelings. So the question is, are you going to tell them? Or shall I? I think that, you know, Craig and Bridget are just terrific, and it would be hard for me now to imagine anybody else in those roles. One of the challenges with this or any series is to find exactly the right cast. So starting with Richard Cipher, we did a worldwide casting search for who is the person who's best going to fill these shoes. Lo and behold, we saw a guy on tape and said, this is the guy. His natural openness and curiosity and willingness was something we tried to put into the character. He has a light quality to his acting that makes him very easily accessible and likable. And you couldn't find a nicer human being to work with. When I confess someone, they lose their free will. They become like a slave. One of the things that Sam Raimi and myself loved about the books was the love story, the relationship between Richard and Kaylin. And we knew that we needed to find somebody in Kaylin who really embodied a strong woman, but one that we could that we could fall in love with. She was a California girl who moved to New York to be on the stage, and she came in the room, brought her back to Los Angeles, and won the part over many other people, and we thought, wow, great, we found somebody for Richard's romantic lead and somebody who can has the strength to be a co-lead. And what we didn't know at the time is how physically agile she is, what strength she has as a character so that you can go to her close-ups and action sequences and she can sell everything. There's a sense of mystery about her, which I think uh, is very important because of the role that she's playing. And she really is able to uh, tap into very real emotion and these characters are playing these sort of larger than life people but we really wanted them to be human you know first and foremost and and not be perfect a cloud in the shape of a horn from the far east i'm betting a month of suppers it'll bring no good before the sun comes up oh no 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 don't worry clara supper will never be you bruce spence is gold He's so funny, and funny in a real way. He plays it real, he gets the humor. He, he also plays a character who likes to be funny and who likes to entertain the people around him. The main ingredient of humor is the unexpected, and there is that degree of the unexpected with, with Zed. I'm having wonderful fun, and uh, as, I read, uh, as I read each uh, episode, and I say, oh my goodness me, I, I don't want to give away some of the magical things I, I'm doing, but I think, wow, I do that. Mm. Now, if I can do that there, then how else can I use that little bit of magic later on? Zedekus Suzerander. He is a wizard, but what's most interesting about him is he's a man. He's a man who perhaps needs some redemption. We thought a lot about um, a movie called Unforgiven by Clint Eastwood, uh, where a man who was once a, a gunslinger uh, has tried to settle down and have a peaceful life, but found that that's, that life has caught up with him, and he has to um, 
don his six guns again and go back into the fight as an older man. Then I, first wizard, Zedekus Zul Zaranda, so name you! Now, let's see if I can give you a little tour of the set, shall we? You want to have a little tour? Okay, follow me. Come on. Our, our town, which we um, manipulate and move things around, and uh, this will give us a different town each time, each episode. People would be surprised to see how much is jammed into this little stage space. We are in <laughs> Studio 5. Studio 5. Henderson. Uh, the suburb of Henderson in Auckland. And um, this is our main studio, right? Yeah, we're in here a lot. It's a forest, and almost a real forest. <laughs> a lot of the trees are real. Well, there's actually even insects here. And birds, there's yeah. a bird. There's an yeah. occasional they bring, bird. They bring, they bring half of the real forest with them and plant it in here. I have to give a lot of credit to Robert Gillies, who's our production designer, who um, is really a master of uh, using space. Now what art department does is they'll come in, they'll trash the place and they'll move everything out and they'll move things around. This we've used for numerous things. It's been a, a tavern a bunch of times, it's been someone else's house. In bringing the world of the seeker to life, my first part obviously is, is getting a script. I break it down and I do come up with a sort of key designs for that episode. Then pretty much start building those sets and issue very quick sketches to the construction manager who sort of takes them. They're really just scribbles. End of Monday, end of Tuesday, and that presumably means something to the construction manager. Thank God. And then a week later, pretty much we've got painted sets standing. And then this set here is a set that the wedding will be in. Bit of a work in progress and the glass is yet to go into the windows and the curtains are yet to be hung and all that sort of thing. I'm Megan and I'm the set decorator on Legend of the Seeker. And my role really is to just manage the team and uh, the way I describe it to most people is that like an interior decorator but for a film set. So curtains, carpets, uh, plates, knives, uh, whatever it needs to have in the set to make it look like what it's meant to be. These are one of my favourite pieces of furniture that we uh, made. As you can see, we'll peel this fabric off and then they'll look like this. And uh, then we've got a whole other look for them when they're going to be in the wedding at Colm's estate. But they're really beautiful, elegant piece of furniture. So yeah, day after tomorrow and um, it'll be all dressed and ready for the camera. This was a dark and rile dungeon in Ep 1, where he walked through and he dragged his dagger along the roof like this. Craig Parker is one of the great villains I've ever seen on screen. He is such a great dark and rile because he completely plays it as if he's not a villain, as if he's the good guy. And when he gives his side of the story, you believe it. We want dark and rile not to be frightening to look at. His actions are frightening. So we've got a quite good looking charming character um, played by Craig Parker. This is quite an honour. It's not every day I get to meet the Seeker. <laughs> <laughs>